All right, once you have your sketch, we have to set it up at the right resolution. This is what I was doing at the end of the last video. So to take that back to review it, you want to make sure your sketch has an image size that is what you want to print. The minimum is 8 by 10 by 300. 300 is the standard minimum print resolution. But I'm going to use my lab resolution, which allows me to go a little bit bigger and a bigger size. So that in this lab, the ideal would be 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. That means we can print it on our largest paper, which is 16 by 20 if we wanted to, which makes for a really good portfolio piece, exhibition piece. So only limited by your size of printer. So I go to image size and I take my sketch, whatever dimensions it is, remember resolution is a combination of, of the physical inches with the number of pixels per inch. So I'm going to change the, the, the height, because mine is longer than it is tall, to 11 inches. And because I have this padlock on an image, it's not going to shrink it or change it. It's going to lock its proportion. So that makes its width 17 inches. So mine's going to be 11 by 17 at 350 pixels per inch. Because these computers can handle that size. Right? If I'm working on PhotoP, I want to keep it as small as I can because browser-based programs, 8 by 10 by 300 is about the best you can do. Okay, this is actually not quite 11 by 17 because I'm actually going to crop it closer to my creature, but my creature fills that space pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag guides by using the move tool, clicking on my rulers and dragging down. And I'm going to make that those guides fit 11 by 14. Because I want to make sure my creature kind of fills that space. And it does pretty well. Also, that's the size of my landscape, right? So this allows my creature to be pretty huge in my landscape. And you can always make it smaller and it will look good. But what we don't want to do is have to make it bigger because then it will soften. All right. So now that I've got the 11 by 14, I can now go to my image canvas size and extend my working space around it. And for that, I'm going to use the largest paper size for commercial printing, which is 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall. And I'm going to extend the canvas color as gray because I'm still on the background layer. Then I hit Command-0 to fit it all on the screen. And I'm off to the races. If I want to, I can use my guides here to grab my image and duplicate it so it's on its own layer with Command-J. And then I can use Command-T to make that bigger. as long as my creature is a large enough resolution. Right? Okay, now it's a good time to save my work because I have multiple layers. And I'm going to save it as... I've already posted my sketch to Canvas, but now I'm saving it as a PSD file. Save it with my... Okay, once you have saved it as a PSD, you want to visually verify you know where it's saving to, especially because we have options to save it to the cloud. We also want to save it at steps like this to our computer. So I saved it within my assignment two folder. There it is. I'm going to mark this with green. That is the, the project so far. Now I've gone beyond my inspiration. Now I'm just working off of my sketch, and I'm going to bring my references in. I always start with the head, and I'm going to bring in what I think are the most likely head candidates over to one corner. And if they come in really big, that's fine. I can loosely shrink them down, but not smaller than I think I might need them. Do everything rough first. And these are the three heads I thought were the most helpful to the creature head I want to build. They're at the right angle, or can be made to be the right angle. 
And this one is the smallest of the bunch. But at this full resolution, still looks pretty darn sharp. Because sometimes even if it's high resolution, you can have it be slightly out of focus or harder to use. Like how this otter's eye is a little bit blurrier here than here. But this one, those eyes are super sharp and contrasted. So there's lots of different reasons to have multiple references. All right, now we're going to get into kind of production mode, where we're going to build different parts of the animal in different sections of our assembly line before we put the whole thing together. So I'm going to use my lasso, and I'm just going to rough cut out the heads with a little bit of overlap, especially at the neck. You want to have overlap, even if it's scales or feathers or fur, you want this overlap to help transition elements. So I'm going to add to that a little bit. And once I've selected around it with my lasso, I have a one pixel feather, right? I'm going to hit Command J, duplicate it, and then I can delete the smart object layer that it came from. And this automatically rasterizes it, which means I can Start modifying it with Command-T. I can angle it to where I think it's closer. I can even start distorting it, warping it, shifting its perspective. I can't change the angle of it, but I can tweak it, right? Kind of make it more into something that can work. This ear position doesn't work, right? But it's those eyes I really like. Now let's work on the fox here. Those ears I'm very hopeful for for this fox. And because it's taxidermy, that's nice and sharp focus. Though the, the photographer is not as professional as I would like. Because the, the set focus is a little bit blurry but at least it's consistent across all of it. So I hit Command J, and then I can delete the smart layer it comes from. I can always reload that, I have that in my references. And now again, hit Command T, and I can play a little bit with distorting it, even warping it, and seeing if I can get the angle I want for that mouth. And I can't really but I can for the ears. Right. Especially if I command T and then just free transform, rotate it so the ears are back here. So you can start to see how I'll have the ears and then the cranium And I can get those to match and blend together. Because ears come out of very different places on different species out of the cranium. And then I liked the eyes of the otter. So maybe just steal something with some overlap. Just this part of the otter. Remember, you can hold down Shift to enlarge your selection. Make sure I'm on the right layer, and then make sure I've got all of it. Then Command J to duplicate and delete the smart layer underneath. I can use the Move tool and move that into place, because that's the angle I want. If I want to move it above my cranium, because these are just for the eyes, or at least placement of the eyes. That gives me something. So I'm starting to have something here I can use. Even though the lighting's different, it's the angle that matters at this point. I'm starting to build the head I need. Now, 
I have some other mandibles I can use. I remember with the wolf body also came a really good mouth, a really good muzzle at the right angle. So I'm going to steal that. But I should enlarge it first. So bring it in and then enlarge just the head to what I need. Now the eyes are the focal point. That should be the thing that's in sharp focus always. Sometimes when you have to enlarge, things get a little soft. And you don't want that to be a major focal point. Okay, now I'm going to get a lot of overlap. I want this whole really cool open mouth a lot of this fur to transition with. And then Command J, delete the smart object. I'll be using maybe that for the body later for the rib cage, but for now, move it down underneath the rest, maybe up above some. There we go. I'm starting to get the silhouette I need. I just need to, to tweak that nose a little bit. To tweak the nose, I can do some internal compositing here. This nose is at the right angle, but I'm going to remove it from maybe even the teeth, though the teeth are at kind of a weird angle. I'm going to remove this by duplicating this separately. This is internal compositing, making a new copy of that, and then moving that copy up above. And then Command T, free transforming it. Oh, I do need to bring the teeth with me. But you see how that's gonna work. It's going down that, that line. I know that looks messy, but it's all informed by the sketch. And that gives me an original head that I transition and clean up like I did the landscape. So that looks good, but I do need the teeth. So I'm going to redo that, go back to this layer, and internally composite. Which basically just means make a copy of it and use it in a different way somewhere else just this section, Command J, move it up above the others, turn the others back on, and then Command T to transform it the way I want. First tilt it down, and then maybe warp it a little bit. so that that nose makes sense with the eye I want to use. And then I can just use my eraser roughly here at 100%. I can use my tablet for the first time with a nice large eraser at a soft edge. Come on, there we go. And already I can get rid of those hard edges and reveal the eye I want. Start transitioning. So that's the otter eye. See if I can reveal it on the other side. There it is. I don't love that. So I might actually keep the wolf eye there and the otter eye there. There's a few ways to do this. I can kind of blend them together like so. Heads are the focal points of the body and then the eyes are the focal points of the head. So you want to make sure you understand the decisions you're making when you get around to the eyes. 
Okay, soften these other 